Hey everybody, Dr. Green here. This morning I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to use PuTTY and WinSkip to connect to a remote server using SSH or Secure Shell. We use Secure Shell as a secure connection between uh, an end user and a server uh, so that we can issue commands, browse file systems, things like that. So for this, you'll need a couple things on your computer. The first is PuTTY. Now I am doing this on Windows, so you can go here. Um, you can search for PuTTY. Um, you can go ahead and download it here. If you're on Windows, you can download it through the official store of Microsoft. You can also get WinSkip from winskip.net. Just download now. Uh, this is my preferred uh, FTP client on Windows. So go ahead, download those, install both of those, and then you can get ready to go. The first thing we'll look at is PuTTY. PuTTY has an icon like this. Uh, I have it in my taskbar. You can also have it in your start menu. You'll notice that when it comes up, we have a host name and we have a port and we have all of these different options. For me, uh, I, right now, I'm going to connect to BGSU Hadoop. This is a session I've previously saved. So you'll see when I load this, uh, it enters the IP address or the web address of that server along with the port. In this case, it is uh, that address with that port. I'm connecting via SSH. If this is your first time creating a session, uh, you can just go ahead and type that in here. Uh, change the name and say save and it saves it right here and then you can load it back up okay so this goes easily back and forth you can also delete this so there are a variety of other options uh, that you can work with as you go through here in the future if there are options you'll have to see um, they'll typically be under the connection tab you may want to enable tcp keep alive this prevents you from getting disconnected and then in the future, there's other things you can add. Uh, most people, at the end of the day, they will end up using tunnels at some point, which is something I will not uh, cover here. Uh, but basically, you can forward activity on a local port to the remote host. Uh, you know, so I can say, you can accept this, you can do all these, you can say, well, I have a source port. 8888 is common. We can say add. Oh, host name import. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll send this to localhost colon 8888 and it would do something like that. It would forward my port 8888 to localhost colon 8888, all right, something like that. Uh, we're not going to worry about that for now, um, but that may be a, future, a feature you would need to use uh, with other applications. So once we have our host name and our port number and our type set up, all we have to do is say open. Uh, if you have not opened up this connection before, it may pop up with a window asking you about a fingerprint key. You can go ahead and say yes. Once I get this, I just log in. And you'll see using my username and password, I am now there. Uh, you will see I am in my home directory. I have a variety of files and things there. And now I can issue commands on this server. Now I can do something very similar with WinSkip. Okay, so I'll go into my menu here. I'll type in WinSkip. Click this. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade right at the moment. Uh, and you'll see I have a bunch of sites saved in here already. This is very similar to PuTTY. We want to use the SFTP protocol. We'll want to enter our host name, the port number we're using, our username, and our password. Okay. So in this case, and for this example, uh, I am going to be connecting to this host on port 22022. My username is green R and I will enter my password. Once this is all set, you can do things like save your session. If you do this, it will ask you what the site name is, what folder you want it in. You can create a shortcut on your desktop so that you can access it later, all these kind of things. There are also advanced settings, but we are not gonna worry about those right now. After doing this, you just go ahead and click login. Uh, you may see that same fingerprint warning. You could just say yes when that pops up. Uh, and you'll see, here we go. Here are all my files in my directory. You'll see this looks the same as this. I have all the same type of files here and here. They've just been organized by folder first. And now I can do things like take a directory over here on the left or a file and I can just drag it over. All right, and let's refresh. Oh, for some reason it's not copying that over. Uh, let's try this one here. There we go. I did copy them both right there. Um, and they are there. I can manipulate them. I can delete them. I can rename them, all these kind of things. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. You can drag individual files or whole folders over. Uh, 
over here on the left, just to be clear, this is your local computer. So you can go in, you can change directories, uh, all this, and you'll see there's little shortcuts up here. You can open an individual directory or bookmark, uh, and then you just do the same thing. You can go over here, you can move around and transfer files. So I hope this helps. I hope it explains to you a little bit about how to use PuTTY and Winskip and SSH to connect to a remote server. And I will see you next time online.